Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining the latest in our series of webinars, which today will focus on bakery mixes and premixes. My name is Sarah Orton, and I am technical manager for LASAF UK and Ireland. And as ever, we are joined by one of our technical experts from the Baking Centre in Lille. Welcome, Panos, who is originally from Greece, but has been working in France for some time now. And thank you very much for your assistance in putting together our webinar today. Hello, and thank you for our invitation. Oh, you're welcome. So you'll be seeing more of uh, Panos later on in the webinar. Hello too to Goulton Yangmo, our bakery business development manager who has pulled together the technical wizardry that's bringing us our broadcast today. So uh, a few housekeeping um, details before we begin, please. Uh, you'll get the most uh, secure connection for this webinar by using either Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox browsers. And please make sure that you don't have any applications running on your computer or tablet or however you're watching that has the camera or the microphone open, as this can cause hiccups in our connection. Uh, don't be shy about posting questions in the chat bar at the side of your screen all through the uh, presentation today. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, but if we don't have time for all the questions that are posted, we'll answer you individually by email. Don't forget to pod, uh, post your questions to moderators only, unless you don't mind everyone else seeing what your question is. Uh, and finally, you'll be able to revisit this webinar afterwards by catching up with it on our YouTube channel, which you can access by using LASAF UK as a search term on the YouTube website. And you'll also find there the earlier webinars we have broadcast in this series. So to begin then, mixes and premixes are just one of the four main pillars of activity that LASAF is concerned with globally. We have a worldwide reputation <clears throat> excuse me, for the range, quality and applications of our yeast products, for example, from fresh through to dry and frozen formats, available from small cubes for the home baker, right up to tanker loads of cream yeast suitable for large scale baking productions. We also have an unparalleled range of sourdough products under the Livendo brand, from starter cultures through ready, -use, uh, ready to use live sourdoughs to, to deactivated paste and dry sourdoughs, um, which are all designed to give a widely diverse palette of flavours and aromas to all sorts of baked products. And of course, our portfolio of bread improvers to support all manner of bakery products and processes, all backed by our technical support network. But today we shall be concentrating on the Inventus range of bakery mixes and premixes. <clears throat> First of all, a bit of clarification on terms. What are the differences between these products? Well, these are the definitions that we use at LASAF. Essentially, a mix does what it says on the tin. It's a complete mix of all the ingredients necessary uh, to make a product, with the exception of water and, of course, of yeast, if it's a, a bread product. It's very easy for the baker to use. But I have to say that um, I have to admit that it doesn't give a lot of scope for creativity for the baker, other than the shape and the, the size of the finished product but nevertheless a very useful uh, tool to have in the toolbox. Premixes, on the other hand, do offer a little bit more scope for creativity because they contain all of the fiddly functional ingredients carried on, an, uh, on a flour base. But depending on the recipe, other, other ingredients could also be carried in this way, for example, sugar or fat, or something like that for an enriched product. And all the baker needs to do is to add further flour and water, and as before, yeast if it's a, a, a bread uh, product. But in this case, though, the baker can choose which flour to add at this point here. For example, adding a percentage of wholemeal or rye or a different kind of grain, such as spelt or perhaps sprouted grains. And in this way, the end product can have its own identity or signature. And then blends are a different thing again. These uh, generally contain uh, not only the functional ingredients for a particular recipe, but also a special type of dry yeast that allows the blend to be stored for a considerable length of time. These generally packed under vacuum to ensure that the yeast remains viable during storage and the baker simply adds flour and water at the mixer and any other um, enriching ingredients that he might choose to use depending on the product he's making. So I think you can appreciate 
that there are many advantages for a baker who would choose to use these types of ingredients and chief among them is the simplicity. They certainly help to save time as the recipe ingredients are pre-weighed, which helps to guard against inaccuracy and guarantees a consistent quality in the finished product, uh, provided, of course, that the makeup and the baking processes are respected. You will see that we've included creativity and innovation in our list of advantages here. And as I've already explained, this can be somewhat limited depending on the type of product, or type of ingredient that you choose. But for Lasaf UK and Ireland, it's unbounded and we're constantly developing new ideas and mixes for our inventors range. We based our developments around some of the key trends that Lasaf has identified. So um, chiefly, uh, these are the trends. So uh, we have our bread and speciality breads um, category, which provides authenticity of recipe, uh, flavor profile, and particular organoleptic properties, depending on the, the uh, premix that you choose. We have a section of sweet specialities, which um, indulges the pleasure and softness and freshness trends that we're looking for. So these are for indulgence. Then we have some uh, that are in the health and well-being category. So um, this is about the balance of nutrition, perhaps uh, addition, added fibres, added seeds, things like that to provide a, an additional nutritional profile. And then the, this final one, which is all about taste and generosity. So this is our pizza range. So currently our ranges look like this. So in the premix range, um, we have a boulangerie mix, a brioche mix, a multi-seed and a Russian style rye. And we'll be seeing more about these later with Panos. Uh, in the blends range, remember this is the, the range where the baker adds his own flour um, and any other additional products, in the ingredients he might wish to add, depending on what he chooses. So this is the most concentrated blend blends, but these have yeast in them. So we have one for uh, what we might call gourmet bread, so um, ciabatta, baguettes and focaccia and all those kinds of things. Then the tradi blend, which is the one which has uh, additional um, aromas added, so the, um, additional sourdoughs and things like that added to give a different um, flavour profiles. Then uh, the soft ones here, this is the melt in the mouth one. So this is for sweet products and enriched products, brioche and donuts and pastries and things like that. And then the pizza one for pizza dough. So this is uh, for uh, flamquiche, that's very thin, um, or for a thick crust pizza. Um, this one, you can also see a demonstration video on the YouTube channel to show how this is used. And then beyond that, there are some additional mixes in the range, um, which are uh, uh, for uh, certain specialities. So there's some gluten-free mixes. These are um, certified and guaranteed gluten-free. Uh, we have some donut mixes. We have two different scone mixes, a standard one and a, a premium version. Uh, a mix for making tiger paste for decorating your bread. And then you have two further topping mixes here, one with seeds and one with semolina. This one is particularly one of my favorites. It has a subtly cheesy flavor. So um, if you were to use that with um, as a dusting medium, for example, for pizza, it gives a fabulous extra cheesy flavor to, to uh, pizza. But today we're going to be uh, watching Panos using our Inventis premixes over here to create some really wonderful breads. And then we're going to hear about the flavor pro uh, profiles of the breads he's made uh, from Camille Dupuis, who heads up the sensory analysis department at the SAF Baking Center in Lille. Just before I hand over to Panos, I must just add a word of caution that a couple of the videos you're about to see do contain some uh, flickering lights. So if you are sensitive to flickering lights, just, um, just to let you know that, um, you may um, just need to be aware of that. Okay, so over to you, Panos. Thank you very much. Well, hello, everybody. I'm happy to be here, and uh, I would like to present you the four different videos that we prepare to the baking center of Le Saint International in the north of France. Uh, let's start with the boulangerie mix. Um, all of these mixes are 50%. It means uh, for one kilo of flour, we use one kilo of uh, mix. And then we have to add the water and uh, the yeast. In this case, we use the craft bake um, fresh yeast of Le Safra. So uh, let's start the video and not hesitate to uh, 
make uh, questions if you want, and we can discuss after. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the baking center of Le Saint International in the north of France. Today, we will present you different recipes with the mixes of Le Safre. Here, we're gonna do French baguette. For this recipe, we will use traditional flour T65, boulangerie mix, fresh yeast, and water. Let's go to mix. One and a half kilo of traditional flour, one and a half kilo of boulangerie mix, 75 grams of fresh yeast and 1,700 milliliters of cold water. We're gonna mix for three minutes slow speed and five minutes high speed. So the mixing is finished. Now, after mixing, we will leave the dough for one hour of bulk fermentation. After one hour, the dough of baguette is fermented and we're gonna divide it. For the French baguette, we will use 350 grams of dough. With the same dough, we can make some fougas. For the fougas, we will divide 400 grams. After dividing, we're gonna pre-shape the baguette. For the fougas, we will make round shaping. Now our pieces are pre-shaped and we rest them for 15 minutes before shaping. So after 15 minutes of resting, we're gonna shape the baguette and then the fougage. So, firstly, we are flattening the dough, both sides, then we fold it, and then we fold it for the second time. After that, we will roll the baguette in order to obtain 45 to 50 centimeters. So after shaping the baguette, we will leave them for 30 to 40 minutes before baking. Now it's time for baking. We can see that our dough is fermented and it's ready for baking. We will use the blade in order to give five cuts. The baking time is 18 to 20 minutes at 250 degrees. So let's see the baguette after baking. Our baguette is well baked and now we're gonna shape the fugas.
Before proofing, we are cutting the fugazi. And now let's go for proofing. As you can see, with the boulangerie mix, we made some French baguette and some fougasse with the same dough. This product is specially designed in order to make French baguette and fougasse. And this is one of the easiest way to make these products. Now it's time for ciapata recipe. So for the mixing, one and a half kilo of traditional flour, one and a half kilo of boulangerie mix, our fresh yeast, and two liters of cold water. We keep some water in order to add it in the end of mixing. The mixing time depends on your equipment and ingredients. After mixing, we leave the dough for 40 minutes of bulk fermentation. After bulk fermentation, the dough of ciapata is ready for dividing. We're gonna use a lot of flour because it's sticky. We can observe that the dough is fermented and it's ready for dividing. Now we are going to proof the products for 30 minutes. Now it's time to bake our ciapata. And now without cutting, we bake them for 15 minutes at 260 degrees. Here we have the three products made by Boulangerie Mix. Fugas, baguette and ciabatta with a little bit more hydratation. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye! Beautifully done, that really lovely, really nice looking products there. Um, I don't think we got in, I'm not sure if we got any questions yet, but I do have a question for you. And that's about the uh, baking for the fugas. You didn't give us a time or a temperature for your fugas baking. Yes, uh, baking time depends uh, on the weight of your product and uh, your equipment, the, the type of oven that you use. In this case, uh, we use the uh, deck oven and we bake for 12 minutes to 260 degrees. That's excellent. And the ciabatta dough that you were making, um, it looked nice and soft. Was it sticky at all or was it just to yeah. extent soft and extensible? Yes, um, it was a little bit sticky because we used uh, um, uh, 80% of water. So... Uh, um, but for baguette and fugas, the dough wasn't uh, so sticky. Oh, that's mm. excellent. Really lovely. Thank you very yes. much. Uh, so the next uh, video is with brioche mix. Uh, brioche mixed, uh, we made uh, two recipes, two different recipes. One, uh, the first we made um, brioche, a French brioche in tin and with open top. And the second recipe uh, was the panettone, where we added some um, um, sweetened uh, fruits. Uh, so let's see the video. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Baking Center of Le Safle International in the north of France. We will present you the Brioche Mix 50%. For this recipe, we're gonna use strong flour, 
the brioche mix, yeast and water. So let's go for mixing. One and a half kilo of strong flour, one and a half kilo of brioche mix, 150 grams of yeast and 1,400 milliliters of cold water. We're gonna mix three minutes slow speed and eight minutes high speed. So the mix is finished. We can see that the dough is well mixed. Now I will divide the dough in two pieces and then I will use the round molding machine. And now, with the remaining dough, we will make some buns. And now, we are going to proof them for one hour. After one hour of proofing, we're gonna put the egg gauche and topping sugar. And now we are going to bake the products for about 15 to 20 minutes in 190 degrees. By using brioche mixed, we made some buns with 70 grams of dough and some brioche in tins with 420 grams of dough. Now for the recipe of panettone, we're gonna use strong flour, brioche mix, fresh yeast, water, raisin, and dried sweetened orange. One and a half kilo of flour, one and a half kilo of mix, 150 grams of fresh yeast, and 1,400 milliliters of cold water. We're gonna mix it three minutes low speed and eight minutes high speed. Once the dough is well mixed, we're gonna add the dry fruits. 300 grams of dry sweetened orange and 300 grams of raisin. We continue to mix for three minutes slow speed. After mixing, we are going to rest the dough for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes of resting, we are going to divide the dough 500 grams. Next step, we will shape the dough and we will put them in the paper tray. And now we are going to put them in the proofer for about one hour. After proofing, our panettone are ready for baking. Then we're gonna cut. And then we're gonna put some sugar. And now let's go for baking for about 30 minutes in 180 degrees.
very nice structure. Very nice too. Yes. Thank you. And I could do some of that panettone right now, actually. It's very, it looks very delicious. Yes. Was... Just to say uh, that uh, both of uh, these um, two mixes are very easy uh, to use. And um, it depends on your wishes uh, about uh, the recipes and that you can make with. But the, this, these mixes are specially designed uh, to make uh, this, uh, exactly these products. Mm -hmm. And what about panettone? Uh, in fact, you can add the quantity of fruits that you wish. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. So I imagine that um, with the brioche, for example, um, the uh, we can make uh, brioche buns for burgers or something like that. Or if you wanted to turn it into a fruited bun, like a hot cross bun or something like that, we yes. could do that too. It's very similar sort of thing. Excellent. Yes, and we can play with uh, the topping. Huh? Uh, Yes, indeed. Decoration yes. With, yeah. like with sugar yeah. and etc. Yeah. We have had a question about the panettone. Do we need to cool it hung upside down like you do with the traditional one? <laughs> um, if someone has the equipment, uh, you can do it. Yes. But um, I think it's not so uh, necessary. Not necessary with not this necessary. Mix, You no. saw the structure was uh, really nice and um, it was very soft inside. We have a lot of humidity. And the uh, structure we will um, we will not change uh, if we turn uh, the panettone mm, right. while uh, so it after wouldn't, baking. It wouldn't, it wouldn't collapse. No, that's very good no. to know. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, we have also had a question um, going back to the previous uh, video with the uh, fugas. Um, we've asked uh, been asked if uh, we can add additions to make. Um, a, what you might call a tradition food gas like a lardons or olives or cheese or rosemary yes, and things like so. that you, yeah you mm -hmm. can add those as well yeah i must well. say that i've done that myself with uh when i've been doing some uh, testing with this mix i've added olives and i added olives right at the end of the mix and then i um for, i um divided my food gas and then i I've about fermented them once they were divided before final shaping and that gave a lovely open structure so uh, i know that it works well with olives so yes i'm i've no doubt that other things could be added too okay so we're now we're moving on to hearty melty seed over to you panos yes uh, so next recipe is multi seed mix uh, which uh, contains uh, some seeds uh, already inside it gives us a nice color on the final uh, product and we can play with different uh, topping like uh, seeds uh, rolling the dough on, uh, on the surface with water and then put some seeds like uh, for a topping we can make uh, also one uh, nice idea is to make the sandwich bread uh, a healthy sandwich bread and with this uh, in this uh, form of baguette small baguette uh, so let's uh, see the video and we can discuss Hello everybody and welcome back to Le Saf Baking Center. Next recipe will be the multi-seed bread. For this recipe we will use wheat flour, the multi-seed mix, fresh yeast and water. Let's go to mix. One and a half kilo of wheat flour, the healthy multi-seed mix, one and a half kilo, 120 grams of fresh yeast and one and a half liter of cold water. We are going to mix 3 minutes slow speed and 5 minutes high speed. So our dough mixed. After mixing, resting 10 minutes. Now, after resting, we are going to divide the dough at a scaling weight of 400 grams. With the same dough, we can make some sandwich baguette of 150 grams.
And now is the taping. Now the proofing time for our multi-seed breads will be one hour at 30 degrees. So it's time to bake the multi-seed bread. So the baking profile, it depends on your equipment and your dough weight. In this case, we will bake for 20 minutes to 230 degrees. So here you have the result after baking of the multi-seed bread. The combination of fresh yeast and the multi-seed mix gave us this nice result. Very nice structure and aromatic bread. Very nice too. Huh? The, the um, multi, the um, sandwich baguette. Uh, having a small dough piece for a sandwich baguette. That's, uh, I can imagine that with ham and salad and things in it. It looks yes, delicious. Yes, it could be nice. Uh, yeah. And uh, the interesting thing here is that uh, you can use your own flour, the flour that uh, you are used to use, and uh, it can be a not corrected uh, flour. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. And, uh, what true. else? Uh, we can imagine this process um, like a slow fermentation process. You mm -hmm. can, uh, for example, you can um, uh, make the shaping of the dough and uh, stock uh, your dough in the fridge um, at overnight process, mm -hmm. four degrees. And next day, you have just to reduce a little bit the um, quantity of uh, yeast that you use. Mm -hmm. And next day, you can make the baking. Yeah. Very nice too, absolutely smashing. Okay, and finally we got the Russian rye. We look forward to that. Yes. Don't forget to uh, don't forget everybody to um, post your questions in the chat bar, and uh, we'll have a chat about it afterwards. Thank you very yes. much. So for the Russian rye, it's one it's one of our favorite uh, mix. It gives uh, a very very nice and uh, tasty final product, and we made uh, a bread in tin, like um, it's a Russian style uh, bread. Uh, we call it uh, Borodinsky, um, and let's see the video. So the last recipe for our presentation will be the rye flour bread. For this recipe, we will use wheat flour, the Russian style rye mix, fresh yeast and water. The special thing for this recipe is that we have to use hot water. So for the mixing, we put one and a half kilo of wheat flour, one and a half kilo of rye mix, 120 grams of fresh yeast, and one and a half liter of hot water. We are going to mix three minutes slow speed and five minutes high speed. So now we are after mixing and before putting them in tins, we will cut the dough and we will give a round shape. The dough weight is 500 grams. A 
And now, after pre-shaping, we rest the dough for 15 minutes. And now it's time for proofing at 30 degrees for 30 to 45 minutes. Now it's time for baking. We just put it some flour as a topping on our breads and we will bake for 40 minutes at 240 degrees. This baking profile needs a lot of steam. So this is the result of the bread made with the Russian style rye mix. Very nice too, thank you. Uh, we've had a couple of people ask um, about the how hot the hot water is that you used. Yes, uh, the water that I used was 60 degrees. 60 degrees. 60 oh, degrees. Really yeah. Warm, yeah. Yes, the reason why we use uh, hot water is about uh, the rye flour. Uh, the rye flour needs to be softened. Right. And uh, that's why we use uh, the hot water. And what happens, uh, our final product the cramp will be more humid um yeah, more, softer uh, and more moist yes yes okay. and that that uh, temperature of yeast uh, uh sorry the temperature of water doesn't affect the yeast at all so uh, if the water is uh, uh very hot we can add the, the yeast three minutes after mixing uh, oh, right. so we start right. mixing and we put the yeast after ah delayed action yeast uh, delayed delayed addition yeast i should say yes yes right okay well and uh, yes and the dough temperature will be approximately uh, 32 uh, degrees and that's why we don't leave it for um, resting time after mixing right so it just goes straight into the prover after molding yeah excellent yes. very good very good Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, hear from Comedie Puy about the sensory profiles of these mixes once they be baked into their products. So enjoy. Hello everyone. About the sensory analysis, we are going to taste and describe uh, the products. So if we start with the boulangerie mix, uh, in this baguette we have a strong uh, smell and taste of sourdough uh, based on acetic smell. Also, we have the rye inside and the sourness is quite long in the mouth. Uh, the, the crumb is very soft and, and the crust, if you bake the product right, the crust uh, is, is very crispy. Um, you can do different shapes of product with uh, the same taste, basically. Uh, so this is a very uh, interesting product because of this uh, quite strong taste. If we now look at the uh, second product, which is the Russian style bread mix, uh, we have a product very uh, toasted and malty to the nose. But once you put it in your mouth, you get a fruity, rye and still malty taste. And the sourness is very uh, long and, and uh, persistent. So this is very complementary with the first one. Uh, bec because of the roasted flavor that you cannot find in the first uh, boulangerie mix uh, bread. Then, uh, arriving to the third product, which is the CD mix uh, uh, bread. So the dominant flavor is definitely the seeds and the grain inside. Uh, also, you have a sweet taste. And so you can see it's very different from the first two products. Uh, and also the, the uh, lasting of the product is, is, yes, a bit sweet and also one of uh, cereal and uh, whole wheat. Let's now finish with the uh, brioche mix. So in this brioche you have two types of products here presented. So the first, the plain one, uh, inside you have the taste, the smell of vanilla uh, and also a very uh, light uh, yellow crumb, uh, very soft also and a very long crumb, which is very characteristic and very interesting for a brioche. Uh, if you bring this uh, orange inside, like in this recipe here, 
you will increase uh, the color of the crumb a little bit and also increase the uh, fruity flavor and make it longer in your mouth. Thank you all for your participation to this tasting session. Thank you, Camille, for your uh, experienced um, taste palette and nose on our products. I'm very glad that uh, you found them also different. That's excellent. Uh, the other thing to mention about the Russian rye is that there is a little uh, caraway uh, seed added. So there is a, a hint of caraway, which is traditional for that kind of bread. So um, uh, that's that's really good to know. So uh, I'm glad that um, that that, um, that certainly uh, Camille was able to pick up on the differences between the different certainly the different bread mixes um, because that that's how they were designed to have these different kind of sour and uh, fermented notes um, because that provides a nice base for bakers to add complementary things to themselves so that they want to. Um, individualize their own uh, ranges they can they can do that individualize their own bread so that's really great okay so just to summarize then uh, we've been focusing our attention this morning on the use of the uh, lasaf inventus range of premixes which form a wider uh, part of a wider range of products designed to make life easier for the baker uh, reducing the complexity and the size of the ingredient inventory and providing simplicity and convenience to baking processes, which gives confidence to bakers that the final product is going to be consistently high in quality and in flavor profile. So today we've been talking about our boulangerie mix, the uh, brioche mix, the Russian style rye, and the hearty multi-seed mix. A very, as you can see here, very easy to use. They're all in powder format. Their dosage rates are all, all 50%, uh, different pack sizes. Shelf life is 12 months ambient. Uh, for all of the mixes um, and the ingredients that are inside them depends on which one that you use obviously yes they don't all have seeds in them. they don't all have the same sourdoughs and things in them so um, a nice range of products i think for people to try so before we come to our questions and answers section of our webinar i'd like to invite you all to join in a, a poll so uh, the question that we're asking you today is what are you, would be your main requirements for bread mixes and premixes and um, i'll give you a minute or two to uh, register your vote if you're able to uh, have access to a, a mouse or something and you may vote for as many of those answers as you please so i'll just give you a minute to do that and we'll see what the what the results are. Another little minute, are we nearly there, do you think? And there we are, there we have the results. So the results are cost in use of, is a key factor, of course, I think that I would expect that certainly. Guaranteed result and creativity is obviously clear, uh, uh, clearly uh, important and easy to use. Thank you very much indeed for participating. That's very interesting indeed. So um, now come to your questions. Um, so don't hesitate to uh, post your questions in the uh, chat bar. And we have a couple. Um, one is what is the shelf life? I, yes, I have mentioned the shelf life, but the shelf life of the mixes is uh, 12 months under the recommended um, storage conditions, which is to say in a dry place at less than 25 degrees C and uh, closed and in their original packaging. Uh, they've all got 12 months on them. Um, somebody else has asked about labeling declaration. Um, all of these mixes are clean, uh, <laughs> essentially clean label, but um, the um, scone mixes, which you may have uh, may remember from the earlier slide, um, do contain baking powder, which obviously have an E number attached to them. And the donut mix uh, also contains baking powder and some emulsifiers too. So, you know, it does depend on which mix you're using, but there is some, um, uh, there are some, uh, uh, E numbers connected with those particular ones. Um, 
Oh, uh, there's one here for you, Panos. Uh, what grade of flour should I use to make the products? What grade of flour did you use? I mean, you mentioned strong. How strong is strong? Yes. Uh, so the standard grade uh, bread flour is recommended and should be sufficient uh, for this uh, type of uh, bread making. Um, some other mixes like uh, donut mix, uh, uh, we can use a more strong flour. But with this premixes for this uh, range, we use the plain flour. And uh, why? Because the mix uh, contains some uh, quantity of ascorbic acid and this gives us a lot of tolerance. And so we can uh, use a plain flour. Not corrected flour uh, is necessary. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. That's good to know. Um, and um, I think the other thing I would mention there too is particularly if you're planning on using the Russian rye mix and you want to add um, maybe your own rye flour to make up the other part of the uh, the, the uh, rye mix, you may need to um, add uh, perhaps a bit of gluten or something to help with the, the, the volume or, uh, or if you're using a wholemeal flour, you may need to consider adding a bit of gluten as well just to, uh, to give you a bit more volume. Uh, would you agree with that, Panos? Yes, yes. It depends uh, on the final product that you wish to obtain. Uh, sometimes uh, in some cultures in uh, Europe, uh, we love the volume of final product, but some other uh, cultures uh, not too used to love the volume in the final product. Mm -hmm. So it depends yeah. really in, on the culture of on the uh, culture, bakery. Yes. Yes. I mean, the Russian rye tends to be a dense product anyway, because it's all about flavor and moisture. Yes, uh, rather than, than close volume. structure, aromatic, and uh, a heavy, heavy product. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, we have another question about um, sensory enhancers in the catalog. Um, I think this is about the uh, uh, seed, seed sensations and the semolina sensations. Perhaps you'd like to explain a bit about those, Panos? Yes, uh, today we have two solutions. Uh, uh, they are about topping the final products, mm -hmm. one uh, with semolina uh, and uh, one other with a um, uh, mix of uh, seeds. So both of them give us um, aromatic uh, um, side on the product and we can also incorporate these mixes in the dough. So after mixing the dough, uh, we keep mixing for one minute with the seeds. And then we we have um, these aromas in the dough. Mm -hmm. One second advantage of uh, using these products that is that um, by um, um, by using these products we can we can reduce a little bit the quantity of salt in our recipe, uh, and it can be a claim on the final product. All these are clean label products, and um, yes, uh, it could be nice to try them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I'll, I'll have a crack at that myself. Yes, the semolina one is the one that uh, that I certainly favour for uh, for dusting for pizza dough, because it is a really lovely cheesy flavour. It really brings out the cheese flavour of the cheese uh, on the on the pizza itself, and uh, the um, texture of the semolina gives a lovely crunchy finish to the crust. So I'm I'm very uh, I'm very fond of that particular product. Also, there, um, there is a tiger paste mix in the range, um, which I'm not sure if you've tried, Panos, but um, the, in fact, there are, we have two tiger paste, one that's designed to be mixed with water and one that's designed to be mixed with water and oil together. Um, and those are uh, just dry powders uh, that are, again, um, designed for convenience for bakers to make up their own tiger paste as uh, when they wish it, um, just to, to add a bit of interest to the tops of their bread. So um, those are all available. I hope that answers your question. Um, and um, we have uh, uh, no. That's the that's the end of the questions that I have. I don't know if anybody else has any further questions to add. So no, doesn't look like it. So thank you very much for everybody for taking part. And that's the end of our presentation for today. And I hope you found it to be interesting and inspiring. Uh, don't forget, you can revisit this this uh, webinar and also the previous ones in our um, in our uh, uh, series. 
uh, by going to the YouTube channel and just entering Lasaf UK into the search term. Um, if you'd like samples of the products to try for yourself, please contact one of the team or use the contact us form on our website, which is uh, lasaf.uk. Uh, and we'd be happy to organise that for you. So this morning, it only remains for me to thank once again, Panos, for your assistance and for making for doing those wonderful videos for us. And also to Camille from the Baking Centre in Lille for her um, sensory analysis expertise. Thank you, Gulton, for putting this uh, um, webinar together for us. And thank you to everybody for attending. I hope you found it interesting and inspiring. Uh, keep safe and we hope to see you very soon. Um, our next uh, um, webinar will be in the autumn and it's all about extending the shelf life of bread. So we look forward to seeing you then. Have a good summer. Keep safe. Steer clear of the COVID. And goodbye. Bye.